How you roll out your song and tease it can literally kill your momentum or make it catapult to viral status. So it's obviously worth it to watch a video for a few minutes and think about this. But to make matters worse, what many of us who discuss teasing songs say contradicts each other. So I wanted to bring together two of the more smart people who I enjoy in this field who work in it and really hash it out so you can figure out what you think since that's all that really matters. So let's discuss whether you should tease your music or not. Should I tease songs or not? I was talking to one of my major label clients just the other day, and they said that their product manager said that they should never post a song until it has 5,000 likes. What say you two? So, Jesse, you just posted a video the other day about this that I think was really salient, where you essentially said, like, the stuff that applies to big artists does not apply to most of the people watching this video there isn't really value in teasing something that people can't go and consume. The only value for a smaller artist. And when I say smaller, I mean under a million Spotify monthlies. The only value is you make one post three to five days before to let your existing fans know this is coming on this day, right? Maybe two posts, but like, that's it. And then everything you don't need to do anything else beyond that because everything else beyond that is just teasing for something people can't actually consume and that they're going to forget about. And then you're going to be frustrated when you release your song and you created 12 pieces of content before and then nobody ends up listening to your song because they try to check it out. And now they don't they're like, oh, it'll come out whenever because you have to remember, like the consumer doesn't like care or think about you that much because they have so many other people trying to feed them various songs, other content, yada yada. Sorry, I do have to stop this since one of the things I'm obsessed with is giving good information. And I made a whole video attacking someone else for not giving context. So I gotta put an asterisk on what Matt says here. I actually think depending on the genre, around 100 to 300,000 monthly listeners on Spotify is about where it could be effective to tease content. And what really matters is, do you have a lot of followers on an app where they're really getting riled up? And in that range of fan base is when it can start to be effective to tease it more. And the bigger your audience grows, the more you should grow it. Oh yeah, and one quick thing before we go. A lot of what this channel depends on is memberships. And what I do for my members is every week I discuss what's changing in music promotion, the small tips, the things I'm testing out, and I dissect thoroughly for 20 to 40 minutes an episode, the artists who are blowing up and finally getting a fan base to listen to their music and exactly what they're doing to do that. So you get five hours of this content for $5 a month. I also answer all of your questions and listen to your music on monthly streams. So if you want to sign up, there's a link in the description or hit museformationlabs.com for more information on what I do. Okay, back to the video now. And also for all the people who use the movie trailer comparison, that's stupid. Movie trailers are like a single before an album, much more than they are like, oh, here's a 15 second snippet. I'm going to show you 35 times before my single comes out, because what the consumption means is totally different. So I'm going to hard disagree with you. And I think I like talking about artists under a million. I think that's a good benchmark to kind of talk about. And I, I don't disagree with you in the sense that promoting something in advance is more or less a waste of time if you're end game. Your goal is to build excitement around that song. I think for the most part that that is true. I agree with that, that you're you're really you're not hedging your bets any better. And you're, you are sacrificing the ability of getting those people and listeners over in real time consistently. But I think the biggest advantage to existing as a musician in the 21st century is being able to do like basically consumer research in real time. And I advocate for all of our artists who have no idea which song to put out first to tease them all simultaneously with the caveat that they are all ready to go because the likelihood of going viral is low. But if you do, you need to be ready for it immediately. You need to immediately shuffle it out there. But what we have seen is when we're coming up against six tracks and I got some manager who isn't up his own ass enough to say, oh, I know what the hit song is, that they were like, hey, I have no idea, because they all don't know. Like, that's the other thing, too. The thing I say all the time, if someone in the meeting says, I know what the clip is, or I know what it is, without fail, that will be the thing that performs worst, and I always laugh about it, because any time someone blows hard with it, it's totally wrong. Yeah, it's it's so funny. Ugh, dude, and sometimes you you're talking to 
these guys at the labels that have been around forever, especially if they've had, they've picked a winner before, then in their mind, they're like, oh, I know. And we had one artist and she's at one of those labels and the guy running, it was just like, nope, this is the song. We're not moving on until this song goes. And it's just like, I can look at the data and empirically it is not the song. But yeah, that's, that's my thing is that like, yeah, you could potentially hurt your ability to convert people in real time. But if I have six songs and I've made five pieces of content for each of those songs and over the next month, I post every single day and I can I can look at all of this content and say, hey, this song seems to be going. And to give you an example of that, and I don't work with Judah and the Lion, but I have friends who do. And I talk to them in real time with Judah and the Lion, where they were testing the songs around all different types of content from like music video to like them in their studio to carousel. And when they finally found a song that was resonating well that became the first single that they put out. And then they went harder on that content. And when I say resonate well, I mean, you can just compare it. You can just say, hey, 300 views, 300 views, 1,200 views, oh, 5,000 views, 300 views. And all of a sudden, you're like, there's one that shines. That's my argument for you should be actively promoting it beforehand. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do two things to qualify because I, yet again, I largely have agreed with, with both of you have said. I think the biggest mistake I see with this is musicians are not data scientists. I'm a data science uh, degree dropout personally. Statistical significance is a thing I think people get wrong constantly. So the big problem I see for most people when they're teasing is they do four songs once and then one gets 800 views. The others get 300, 400, 500. That is not statistically significant. That is right now just the same way that America has 330 million people in it, and you see presidential surveys that survey 300 people. That does not mean it means anything at all when the survey is that little. I mean, we all know we all create a lot of content. The video, the just X factor of what audience it's served to is often much more determinative when the numbers are that small. You are correct, and I agree with you, Dustin, that when it's a clear hit because you've done this a couple times, it can tell you a lot. And... I think one of the one things I will say is one of the main advantages I saw inside a major label was that you could bring around a song to lots and lots of different people. And then you could get a consensus very early on that it's like, this is clearly the hit. The story I tell often is um, back in the day what Bon Jovi used to do that I thought was genius is they'd pull up to pizza parlors and look to see if the people looked like their fads. Then they would invade the stereo system and they would ask people to sing back the songs. What was most significant back then is will this song get added to radio? And if somebody could sing it back, that was a high likelihood of it getting put on radio. The thing I would say, though, is that you're correct, too, about that it needs to be ready to go. Because a thing I see all the time is people call me and they go, Jesse, my TikTok has 5 million views and the song's not done. And then by the time it's out, all that momentum is gone. And when you're getting, on a bad day, 2% conversions over to listening to on Spotify and YouTube on a good day, 8 9%, that's a lot of streams to miss out on and a lot of potential fan conversions. Because I've seen the way you do it with your clients, Dustin, and I think it's really clever. I guess part of my anxiety with it is like, so A, a lot of what I'm doing is like heavier rock and metal, which is much more like pulling teeth to get good content. So I think a lot of my strategies are kind of built around like the amount of content we're going to have is minimal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think it's like if you have that capacity to do that, then like, fuck yeah. I think sometimes I just kind of build with this idea of like, we're not going to have a lot. So when we got to do it one step at a time. Do you know what I mean? But I also yeah. like, I, I remember that Judah and the lion campaign and you are a hundred percent correct. Yeah. And you know, and I feel you on that. Cause if it's limited content, why are you going to blow it all before a song drops? But you know, it's funny. Cause even internally though, we have this argument all the time. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There, there are people more heavily in the day to day to these campaigns than I am any longer. And when I sit down and I communicate an opinion like this, there's oftentimes like two or three people will be like, no, absolutely not. And here's why. And it's all, it's all the nuance. I think that's the struggle of being a, a, a guru. And I, I, I hate that term too. You have three seconds to get people involved in your content and you have to be very like absolutist about it. Right. And it, it, there's just so yeah. much, like it's not a one size fit all for all artists. And when they watch this content, it's like 
hey, man, I followed your advice, but it didn't work. And here's why. And it's like, yeah, this, of course, this didn't work because it just, just, just doesn't apply to you. And it's like, well, it's your fault because you're like, you never need to be doing this. Right. Like it's it's so tough. So, but the one thing I, I, I want to take us back to, because I know that what people are not always talking about is the testing songs, as much as the thing of that just a lot of these people they see that are bigger artists are doing, posting most of the campaign a lot of the time is posting before the song is even out. That to me is always the silly one because that yeah. is a thing for artists with a big fan base because people will think about it and get served it because they're probably also have another mechanism to get served that song, whether that's they're already in their release radar, they're already in their discover weekly, they're already following the artist. And whereas for most small artists, that is not the case at all is that you're not there and you haven't had the chance to convert someone over to being enthusiastic about you or just seeing you as another song on a playlist, even if they haven't liked you a few songs from you. Well, and it's so funny because um, all they have to do is exist to Donald Glover's campaign recently where he's sitting backwards on the horse and stuff. I mean, it's entertaining mm -hmm. in some ways, but for the most part, it's BTS, like 20 seconds BTS, and that's all he needs to do. So for any artist to look at something like that and say like, oh, Donald Glover did it or Billie Eilish did it or whatever. I remember Little Nas X popped a pimple to promote his like right like you have to ignore that that's a level of stardom that is never useful to watch 